Hey everyone and welcome to another video here at Whiteboard Doctor. Today's video is going to be one targeting those interested in or learning about or training in or working in healthcare or medicine. But obviously we encourage anybody uh, interested in uh, just learning about something new to uh, check out the video. Interesting topic, challenging topic, um, and that's posterior ST elevation myocardial infarction or posterior STEMI or sometimes you people call it posterior OMI occlusion myocardial infarction and we're going to look at a real patient's 12 lead electrocardiogram talking about posterior STEMI. Uh, quick 30 second break for introduction. Don't go anywhere though. We will see you right back. Hello everyone and welcome to another video here at Whiteboard Doctor. Thanks for joining us today. Here at Whiteboard Doctor, our mission is to provide you with free, interesting, relevant, understandable medical education and news for all types of lifelong learners, trainees, and practitioners. We have weekly videos that we debut Fridays at 5 p.m. Eastern Time with bonus medical education videos posted throughout the week. We'd love for you to join the Whiteboard Doctor community and follow along by hitting the subscribe button located in the bottom right-hand corner. We also encourage all likes and comments, even if it is just to say hello. All our video descriptions contain links for additional related videos that might be interesting, so don't forget to check those out. And lastly, a quick disclaimer, none of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read this disclaimer its entirety before moving on. With no further ado, stay well, keep learning, and let's get to the video. All right, thanks for sticking around. So a few matters of business. We wanted to uh, let you know that in this video's description, we're gonna link a bunch of related videos. And also, if interested, this is our Whiteboard Doctor homepage. On our homepage, we have our medical education collection of playlists with lots of different uh, content on medical education divided by topic, critical care, endocrine, pediatrics, cardiology, immunology, nephrology, hematology, rheumatology, and then one of those playlists is 5-Minute ECG. So if we go to a view full playlist, we've got a bunch of different ECG topics ranging from introductory things like intervals, rate, rhythm, to more advanced things like STEMI equivalents, AFib, left bundle branch block, LVH, all that good stuff. So definitely check that out if you're interested in this topic. Uh, no further ado, posterior ST elevation myocardial infarctions. So one of the reasons we wanted to talk to uh, talk about it today is because it's actually a difficult diagnosis to make on 12 lead ECG. And the reason being is that the ECG doesn't directly look at the posterior myocardium traditionally, right? So if we draw, we're not a uh, great artist, but if we draw, this is a human. This is supposed to be the front side of a human. Here's their neck, goes up to their head. Um, when we are doing our 12 lead ECG, the leads are all on the interior aspect, right? So here we have are V1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then we have our limb leads, and they're all looking at the anterior planes, right? The patient is facing us. So because of that, we don't see the posterior myocardium directly with a 12 lead ECG. So as such, what we have to do is actually look for reciprocal changes. So if it was not a posterior STEMI, it was a STEMI, let's say it was inferior distribution or anterior lateral, you'd get your P wave, right, Q, R, S, and you'd get this ST elevation myocardial infarction or this ST elevation right here, right, the ST above the isoelectric point. Reciprocal changes would be ST depressions, and that's what we have to look for for a posterior ST elevation myocardial infarction. And the diagnostic criteria are written out here. So you'll look at V1 through V3. And what you're looking for are horizontally shaped ST depressions, tall, broad R waves, upright T waves, and then a dominant R wave in V2. So what we drew out here is V2. And what we see, right, is we see number one, horizontal ST depressions. Well, here is the isoelectric line, right? So that'd be going there. And you have this ST depression here. And then this portion is horizontal, it's a horizontal ST depression. Then you also have tall, broad R waves. Well, this is the R wave here, right? And it's quite tall and broad, so tall, broad R waves. You have an upright T wave, this T wave is upright. And then you have a dominant R wave in V2, so the R wave is quite large in V2. This is suggestive of a posterior STEMI. But how do you clinch the diagnosis? You might have guessed this, it is posterior leads. 
So you flip the patient around, now they're facing away from us. These are their scapula, if you didn't notice that. And you put three leads, V7, V8, V9, on their back, right, left side. The V7 is the posterior axillary line, which sits about here, right? Here's the axilla, posterior axillary line. V8 you'll put at the scapular tip, and V9 will be paraspinal. And then you just hook this up to the 12 lead ECG. And what do you see? This is actually a 12 lead ECG from a patient. Uh, we won't say when or who, who for HIPAA protection, but the 12 leads are labeled. And you can see that we have V7 labeled here, V8 labeled here, and V9. We're just gonna erase those so that you can see things well. And if you look, what you will see is a small, this is the isoelectric line here, isoelectric line here, isoelectric line here. You'll see ST elevations in these three leads. Let's see if we zoom up. Can we zoom up this way? No, let's zoom up this way. One moment, zoom, zoom, zoom. There it goes, we're gonna go over. So you can see it a little better now, especially if we erase what we drew. So if we erase these, you can see the small ST elevations. And the things with posterior leads is you really only need 0.5 millimeters of ST elevations in those posterior leads for it to be positive, right? You don't need the big, uh, I shouldn't say big, but the uh, traditional criteria for ST elevation myocardial function. You just need 0.5 millimeters in those posterior leads. And that's what we see here. Right, you can see small ST elevations, which is right there, right there, right there in these posterior leads. And that is consistent with a posterior STEMI. So if you have a patient who has a concerning story and part of their workup, as it should be, is a 12 lead ECG. And if that 12 lead ECG shows some of these changes that we talked about here, right, the Horizontal ST depressions, which you can see right here. ST depressions and they're horizontal. Tall, broad R waves, upright T waves, dominant R wave in V2. Get the posterior ECG. Put those leads on the patient's back, V7, V8, V9. And then look for mild ST elevation in those posterior leads. And then you activate that cath lab for a posterior STEMI. Let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have down below. Hopefully that was interesting, uh, informative, and uh, brief enough. Um, check out our other videos. We'll link some in the video description or go to our page, subscribe, hit the bell button, all that good stuff. We appreciate you. Stay well, keep learning, and we'll see you next time.